Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today I decided I'm gonna be sharing my birth story with Sophia. I did have her at home, um, so it's quite a different experience than what I did with my first, which was I had him at a hospital. Um, and I have a little notebook here just to make sure I get everything I wanted to talk about, um, just going through it. And I'm, I'm mainly making this video because I know when I was about to have a home birth, I was looking up positive experiences or ex experiences in general of people having home births to just kind of mentally prepare myself and what am I getting into? What is this going to look like? I'm, I like to visualize things. So maybe this video will help you guys out if you're planning or deciding to have a home birth with your future kids. The first thing I wrote down was why I decided to have a home birth. So um, working as a mother baby nurse prior was a big reason why I decided to have a home birth um, the second time. Meaning um, things that I saw in the hospital was not something I'd always agree with. Sometimes I hate to say it, but um, it comes down to a lot of like doctor shifts, nurses shifts, puts stress on the mom. You know, like if you're, you're OB that you've been dealing with for your entire pregnancy isn't going to be there to deliver your baby. I've seen it where, you know, they try to push a little bit more medication on the mom and oxytocin, a lot of these things, a lot of these practices often lead to um, C-sections, undesired C-sections. And that's something I didn't agree with. I, I saw it numerous times and it broke my heart to see a mom have to go through um, a c-section when it really wasn't necessary i mean whatever way you deliver your baby you're going to be both okay um but just you know when you come into the hospital with a whole plan it's just hard seeing and seeing the aftermath of those moms breaking down to me and crying to me about how their plan didn't go as as they thought it would um that was a big reason i also had my son um in the hospital like i said the first time and that experience, it was during COVID. It's when COVID first, you know, was going about. There was a lot of births at the time too. And I just felt completely ignored. I felt like no one, because I was a low risk pregnancy and everything was going fine. I felt like no one was coming to even see me. No one was asking me how I'm doing, even though I'm a mother baby nurse and I know how to help patients. I've never actually experienced it myself until having my son. So it's way different when you're, walking the walk instead of just talking the walk you know like you know what to say but you don't I never felt that I never actually went through that myself so it would have been nice to have the guidance that I that I give to my patients and guide them through either the labor or the postpartum experience um so I kind of felt like you know being in this hospital surrounded with all these people I'm more lonely here then my home birth was, which was surrounded by love, and I felt the love in the in the, in the air. It was nice, uh, so that's a big reason of why I decided to have a home birth. Those two reasons. So another thing I was curious about was the difference between a midwife and an OB. And in my case, I would say the midwife all the way. Next next pregnancy for sure, I'm gonna choose a midwife again. Midwife, midwife, midwife. Just because they're so much more personable, they they really care, or at least they seem like they really care. Um, I, some of my midwives would give me their phone numbers, they would text me, like, here's a couple exercises you can do. Hey, how's your diet going? Like, it's it's way more personal. They know you by name, which, which was weird to me. Like, I'd never experienced that with my OB. I would come in, and they have so many patients, so you only have about you know, 10 minutes, and this is before we spending like 45 minutes in a waiting room. Um, and then you have, you go in, you know, they'd ask you your standard questions, they come in, they do whatever exams they need to do and they leave. And I felt like it was such, such a cold experience. Um, with the midwife, it is literally in a room that looks like this. Then we both sit on the couch, we talk. Their appointments are about like 45 minutes to an hour. Um, they really take your time, answer any questions you need. I just, all the way midwife. Next time, I would never choose an OB over a midwife. Another thing with the midwife is they kind of lay out all your options. So just just an example of like the glucose testing um, for my OB, I didn't even know there was other options besides drinking that nasty drink that you have to drink to get your um, glucose tested. 
with the midwife, they give you like a booklet for every trimester. At least my midwife did. They give you a booklet for every trimester and it you know goes into what you're gonna experience with this trimester, what to look out for, what not to look out for, home uh, homemade remedies for like things like nausea in the first trimester um, and like stuff like sleeplessness in the third trimester. And so for the second trimester, they gave me um, a list of things I can do for the glucose screening besides the nasty drink, um, which was like, there's a, another drink you can make, some kind of lemonade. Um, the option I did was like actual food you could choose. So it wrote out like what exactly you need to eat, which was including like a glass of milk, two eggs, a piece of toast, I just like that option a lot better than, you know, waking up on an empty belly, chugging a glass of like full, um, not even a glass, it's a bottle of sugar syrup, basically. Um, it just made me feel so nauseous. I remember the first time, so having the option of regular food, um, which first of all, the sugar drink makes no sense in my brain because like all that sugar is probably going to be directly to the baby. But besides the point, um, having the regular food uh, with the right amount of sugar intake and you know, you're balancing out with the fats. It made me feel a lot better um, After having that and then you know, I passed my glucose test the first time actually uh, My first pregnancy I didn't even pass it and I had to do a three-hour one Which was miserable because you just have to stay in the office and get pricked for the blood tests multiple times But I passed that too eventually it just took a little bit longer um, So I really liked that part of that and then also for the midwife, um, right before, maybe when you're like after your second trimester, going to your third trimester, they have you little have you come to a little class, um, which is what you're gonna expect for the home birth, what to have prepared. They give you certain things that you need to either um, yeah need to purchase. There's like a few things. It's not expensive. Something like a flannel tarp to protect the floor. How many towels should you have ready? They give you the list and the rundown, and they have. Um, you and your partner come and ask any questions uh, regarding what's about to happen in the birth of your baby. Also with a home birth, you're able to have whoever you want there. Like obviously you don't want a whole party there because this is an intimate moment. I was debating on whether just having me and Anthony there um, or also what I decided to do is have me, Anthony and my two friends there. My one friend Natalia, been with her since birth. Um, and my other friend that I used to be a mother baby nurse with, um, her name is Aisha. So they were both there and at the end, it was great that the nurse was there and Natalia, they were both super helpful um, because of because of my hemorrhage, they were all helping. So it was it, was, it worked out. Uh, they were able to you know open up the gauze whenever and help out the midwives, everything they said, go get this, go get that. They were both on it. They were both, Anthony was a little bit shocked. He was just like looking at everything, like, ooh, is this gonna be okay? Um, and then he eventually started to help out too, but the girls were like right away, like let's get to it, which was nice to have them there for that. So I was 40 weeks and three days when I went into labor with Sophia. Um, I was just sitting in the, on the couch watching a movie with my husband, Anthony and we were just talking and this happened a couple times before but i would slightly feel some cramping contractions and i'd start to write it down i swear i thought i went to labor like four or five times before actually going into labor i don't know if it's more common with um like multiple pregnancies but that was happening and it was it was a little bit frustrating because every time I'm like, oh, this must be it. So I start writing it down on my notepad on my phone um, to see how far apart the contractions are. And then it, after two, three hours, it would just stop. And I was like, this is so strange. Um, so the day it was happening, 40 weeks and three days, I remember starting to writing it down. And Anthony's like, hey, these are kind of getting pretty close together. These are like five minutes apart, four minutes apart, five minutes apart. He's like, maybe you should call your midwife. And I was like, no, maybe I don't need to call it yet. I don't need to call them yet because I have previously already called them once, maybe a week prior to that. And it was a false alarm. So I just didn't want to annoy them and bother them, even though they say it's totally fine. Um, but so I ended up calling them when they were about two minutes apart, which I was progressing pretty quickly. It was like at 3 p.m. in the afternoon was when it started. And then like I called them around 
five, six o'clock. And I was like, hey, just you know, heads up. I think it's happening. And they asked me a bunch of questions like how far apart are your contractions? Call us when they're about a minute to a minute and a half apart. So I was like, okay, sounds good. Um, hung up the phone and they said, um, you know, Anthony started to get the tub ready just to inflate it, not to put the water in, put anything down just in case this was the thing happening. Also prior to this, I did get like my towels or whatever they said to get ready. I had like a corner of like designated my birth stuff anytime after I was 38 weeks, I had that whole corner already set up. So it was good to go. Um, so after my contractions were about a minute and a half apart, I called them and I was like, oh, I, they're a minute and a half apart. They're getting a little bit more intense. Um, so you guys can come on over. And they were like, okay, we'll be there in 15 minutes. When they got there, um, they asked me if I wanted to be checked. And I said, you know, yes, because I was so curious about, you know, is all this labor for anything? And they told me I was five centimeters. So I was like, woohoo, we're getting there. We're getting there. At least there's progress. All this, I know every contraction means you're a step closer to your baby, every single one. So I just kept thinking about that. And at this point I could just, I was just breathing through everything. I was able to breathe through them all and it was okay. I was just like, this is manageable. I read a lot of books beforehand about breathing techniques, Lamas, I did it all. So I was like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Cause I heard a lot about like keeping yourself composed. It like really does a lot for the baby and for you and for your pain. Like if you, if you make painful faces, you actually increase your pain. So I was five centimeters dilated. Uh, which was great news all my hard work every contraction was pushing that baby a little bit down further and that means a little bit closer to right on my chest <laughs> um so i was able to breathe through every contraction at this point and um, they weren't they were getting definitely more intense but i was just you know getting every time i felt a contraction i did a couple different things i had a birthing ball i was bouncing on that birthing ball sometimes i'd have anthony do counter pressure on my back which i showed him a couple videos prior to labor so he knew what to know what to expect i also did something where i saw online which is where you take a black like a spiky cone and you squeeze it while you're having a contraction and the pain from that is supposed to divert your brain to go here instead of there and actually strangely enough that really did help i remember having that comb in my hand for quite a while until i looked at my hand and i realized like oh i have like a mark over here i need to go a little bit lighter there so we don't have to heal this and that later after this is all done um so labor was okay up until i would say my water broke, my water broke somewhere around 1 a.m. Um, so I went into labor at 3 p.m. that day and the next day at 1 a.m. my water broke. Um, and that is definitely where the contraction started to get super intense. Um, I was still able to breathe through them, but you know, there was sometimes a little bit of moaning, a little bit of, oh, it was definitely harder. Um, something that helped was me getting into my shower so I, you know, I had the birthing pool set up. I was able to get into there, but you know, at that time I still wanted to move a lot. Well, during my contractions, I still had that feeling like, oh, I have to move every time it was happening. So being in the shower with the hot water on my back in between contractions was really nice. And then when it was happening, I was still able to move because I was standing up in my shower. Um, I was praying a lot too. I just kept saying like, you know, giving this all to you, Lord, and giving all this pain to you and, that definitely helped too. I feel like he was right there with me. Getting into the water uh, was definitely the start of the intense period for me. I wasn't, I was still breathing through most of the contractions um, up until like that last 15 minutes right before I gave birth. I only pushed my daughter for eight minutes, which was thank God because that eight minutes felt like 25 30 <laughs> um they're very intense eight minutes so um it was the strangest difference between my daughter and son pushing because with my son i had an epidural and although i had the epidural i was telling people like you know i thought my assumption was like oh you're just not gonna feel anything like it's gonna be great i felt a lot with my son so i was like this is really painful like i still feel the ring of fire or whatnot it was it was really painful so um i thought that's kind of what it was going to be like so like oh maybe the epidural didn't work no it worked it worked because when i had my home birth like the strangest difference to me was like for my epidural hospital birth they were telling me when to push you know i felt a little bit of urge but not nothing compared to what i felt with that home birth 
with the home birth, it's like your body just complete. You don't have to do anything. Your body literally starts pushing this baby out for you and you cannot stop it. I remember thinking in the tub, like, oh no, another contraction's coming. My body's about to start pushing, but I want to break. I just want like a, a, a minute. <laughs> like, give me a minute to breathe. Let me let me get myself together. And my body was like, mm-mm, we're not giving you a minute. Um, and it, it's so strange. It's like your body curls up, your belly curls up around your baby and you start pushing whether you like it or not. That's how it felt like. So you better just embrace it and push along with it, which is what I decided to do after like the first two times it happened. I was just a little bit like, what is going on with my body right now? This is so strange. It was the most crazy experience ever. Um, I'm gonna remember that for the rest of my life. Also, I remember asking my midwife, um, how do I know that I'm okay to push? Because in my head, I was like, I need to be 10 centimeters to push this baby. I need to stop this going on. I can't be pushing. I feel like that's what I was trained on with my medical background. Um, and she, it was funny because she was just like, honey, put your hand down there. And I was like, okay. So I put my hand down there and she's like, what do you feel? I was like, oh, I feel the baby's head. And she's like, okay, then you're a 10. You can go ahead and push. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Perfect. I'm going to start pushing. <laughs> so, um, we, like I said, I only pushed for eight minutes. Um, after her head, first her head came out uh, and then I had a break of a contraction and then her body came out. But after her head first came out, you just saw, like, I have a, a, the home video um, that the water just immediately started to change colors um, to a bright red. And then after her body came out, like, the whole tub was getting darker and darker by the minute. And what I really wanted to do was have the baby on my chest and let all the cord blood go into the baby. Um, but I do remember looking at that tub, crying, of whatever happiness that I had just had my beautiful daughter and my husband. It's such a beautiful moment. Uh, I remember looking at, like around me and it's like super red. And I was like, okay, of the home birth videos that I've watched, I do not remember seeing this much blood. And also like working in the hospital, I kind of had an inkling like this looks like a little bit too much. So um, the midwives, after about like two minutes on my chest, they kept trying to feel the cord to see if it was still pulsating. And they're like, okay, I think we're gonna have to cut it because we need to get you out of this tub. And you know, I was still in bliss. I was like, oh, it's okay. I felt great. Um, after all that, you know, like you just have these endorphins, like your baby is here. Like you have your baby, it's over. You did the hard part, you're okay. Uh, so that that helped a lot <laughs> so after they took the baby and gave him to anthony to do some skin to skin um and then i remember getting out there was my friend helping me and the midwife getting me from the pool to the bed we kind of wanted to see what was going on no one was really talking to me about it i don't think they just didn't want to freak me out um even though seeing the blood i kind of knew when i stood up out of the tub it was just kind of pouring out of me uh literally and then when I laid on the bed, um, I still felt great. The baby was crying, so she wanted to nurse. So they kind of tried to distract me and help the baby at the same time by letting me breastfeed the baby um, while they were looking down there to see what was bleeding so much, what's going on, is my placenta okay? And um, so all the, I didn't have an IV at this point because I was in the tub and I was laboring just fine. So after I was on the bed, they right away were like trying to hook up an IV to me. And I was like, asked, started to ask questions like, you know, is this okay? Like I see there's a little bit extra blood. And they're like, they were very calm with their responses, which was helped with my response, I guess. Um, but they very much made it seem like this is not a big deal. We're gonna be okay. And then um, after a few minutes, they all kind of started to get silent and working with each other, but I kind of heard them. Um, while I was trying to breastfeed the baby and um, I could tell that it was a little bit more urgent than what they were saying to me um, because also they were coming to me to hook up the IV and give me Pitocin. They said that we're gonna give you um, oxytocin, which is to contract and shrink your uterus. And they're gonna give me a methogen, which is a pill um, to help stop the bleeding. And I think they gave me, oh, they gave me one, way, one more thing, which was TXA, which is another thing, the IV to help stop the bleeding. Um, at first I was like, I don't think I need all these things, guys. Thank you, but no thank you, I'm good. Cause I felt great. No one was making a big deal about it. And then at that point when I started to say, hey, I don't want the medication, 
they started to look at me like, no, you need this. You need this right now. We can't stop the bleeding. You know, like they're holding pressure. Um, and then when they take off the gauze, which was what my friend told me afterwards, um, they were holding pressure. And then when they took off the gauze, it was just squirting blood again. And it looked like I was sitting in a pile of a puddle of blood. I didn't see any of this, thank God. <laughs> um, so afterwards they gave me all the medications i agreed to it. i was like okay if you're saying it's urgent then i'll do it um and then they realized what was bleeding was an artery i had ruptured an artery her her head sophia's head had ruptured an artery coming out so what they needed to do was stitch that artery and cauterize it um or stitch it or cauterize it i'm not sure what they did but they eventually were finally able to find which one was bleeding and they fixed it and it stopped bleeding um and then afterwards they'd have to change all that stuff that was under me because i was literally in like a little puddle of blood um so during this time my husband was holding a big um those construction flashlights what a memorable sight for him to see uh, right on me and then also my friends were just like ripping open gauze and getting everything that the midwives were asking them to get um, and then after all that was said and done, I finally stopped bleeding and everything started to settle down and it was okay. Afterwards, they kind of explained to me what happened. They thought it was a little bit strange. They definitely didn't see it coming. Um, they, they said everything looked fine up until the point where her head came out and all that started to happen. They stayed with me for another three, four, I gave birth at 226 and they left around 5 a.m. So they stayed with me for another two and a half hours to make sure that I was okay. They waited until I had my first pee and they stood up and I was like, okay. The whole time I felt like nothing. I felt like definitely I wasn't bleeding out. I was okay. Um, they said I lost, I lost over a, a liter of blood for sure. They don't know how much was in the pool, but what they could have counted was a liter. Um, and so, that, you know, seeing, list, hearing that and knowing what I know from my hospital experience, like we always were like, oh my gosh, like this is a little, this is, this is intense. We got to watch the mom because a lot of moms tend to pass out after losing that much blood. I just didn't want to go to the hospital and be transferred after doing all that at home. I did not want to be transferred to have a blood transfusion or anything. So right away I started to eat. My friend, my the one nurse friend that came over, she's Turkish and she makes these great Turkish salads. Um, so she actually packed one for me and she was spoon feeding it to me. She was like, girl, you are going to be okay. And she was, it was great having that plan of like the food afterwards and we planned that out a little bit. So it was good and helpful because who knew that I was going to have a hemorrhage. Um, and also I'm going to have Anthony come over here because I definitely like when I start to tell people that I was going to have a home birth, a lot of people were asking me like, what do you think Anthony thinks about this? Like, is he cool with this? So I'll have him answer for himself. All right. So welcome, Anthony. <laughs> welcome to our channel. <laughs> Um, so what did you think initially when I said, I want to have a home birth? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he definitely thought I was crazy. Why did you think that? Why I think that? Yeah. I thought it, and this is exactly what I thought. I thought f for, um, for centuries, for millennia, human beings were giving birth in the bushes of the forest. <laughs> bushes? <laughs> Yeah, the brush, in the brush, and all that time, um, you know, we kept striving on on developing and making more, finding ways to to help women give birth, and all that innovation culminated into the creation of hospitals and mother baby wards and what do you call it? Okay. And and science and all these other medical techniques and practices. And then all of a sudden, Anya wants to, and her being a mother baby nurse, someone who, who's a professional and works in the, that environment on a day to day basis, all of a sudden for her to step away from that and say, I want to do a home birth, I thought it was pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, definitely was opposed to it at first. Oh, what? Yeah, you were yeah, like, uh, why would you want to do that? No, we're not doing that. And then when do you think, like, was the point where that you changed your mind? You're like, ah, whatever, we should do this. So similar thought process to how um, for thousands and thousands of years people have been giving birth in a home environment. Um, <laughs> the hospital is a revelation 
um, it's a, it's a new innovation that came ac- came to be created within like the last what 150 years, yeah. 200 years. Um, so the hospital is actually the new thing, the new setting. So why not go back to the old ways of doing things that have been done for thousands, thousands of years? Now, granted, back then, um, giving birth was a dangerous thing to do. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the statistics off the top of my head, but obviously more women lived than died so um yeah why not why not why not go back to the, to our roots right and also we have precautions in place so we understand the risks better than anybody else right given that i as a mother baby nurse we understood what could go wrong she's seen things go wrong she's been in that environment so we had contingencies in place and plus with the midwives that we worked with they were professionals and they had contingencies in place as well for for emergencies you know for example like what will we do with if the power goes out in the middle of this right? yeah we what, what happens that. if there's a snowstorm or hurricane or something along those lines uh, which is in the realm of possibilities yeah someone every... asked that and i was like are you serious yeah. but i guess it's, it is a we question lived in new jersey and you know in new jersey we can get snowstorms um that can that can be pretty brutal so what happens in those environments so all these things we thought through um, and at the end of the day, like I said before, I as a professional mother baby nurse who's been, she's been trained in this environment, she's worked in this environment, and her opinion counts much more than mine. <laughs> mine right? Yeah, I also think it helped when like I took Anthony to a, a midwife visit early on, um, and I brought him there because first of all, you, they're allowed partners are allowed to come to these visits, um, but mainly for the fact of like him to ask the midwife. To her face like if he has any questions regarding it why are you scared you know maybe she can provide some more insight and i remember her giving anthony some facts about like actually you know there's higher rates of this at hospitals higher rates of this you know we've had this many births and that have all been successful everything's been great um so i think that helps too yeah so how did you feel in the moment when you realized i started bleeding a lot i didn't know what bleeding a lot looks like um, <clears throat> I didn't know what a normal birth looks like even though we had Sebastian who was born when I was in a hospital setting so I knew the blood comes with the territory but I I didn't have a baseline understanding of what is normal and what is not normal so to me everything was going normal <laughs> even when they started like you saw that like puddle of blood under me and then they yeah. were like get the flashlight get Did the you... flashlight I'm like all right that could be a little bit of blood she tore uh, Anna told me sp- stories about women tearing all the time <laughs> Right, it's pretty normal. You know, uh, I'm like, all right, she toured and part of the business, whatever. <laughs> um, everything seemed normal to me. Um, it's only until after the fact, when the situation got uh, dealt with, that the midwives kind of opened up and said, "Yeah, that was uh, a little bit more blood than we would have liked to see." Okay, last question. Overall, would you do another home birth with me? Yeah, as long as you're up for it. Uh, it's not me pushing a baby out. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would do it. And then you felt like, you know, you were good during the labor part. Like, was it was it getting monotonous? Was it boring? Do you feel like you were helpful during it? Uh, I think I was helpful. I don't know. I feel like my only job was just to hold your hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think I did that pretty well. So <laughs> maybe, yeah, that was helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, well, those are our thoughts on our home birth, and this is our home birth of Sophia. She was born September 26th at 2... 20... what is it? 20... The details, the details. Early morning. <laughs> Early morning. <laughs> 226, 225, somewhere there. <laughs> we got to remember that, because she's going to keep us uh, on track with that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.